My very first bout, I, I went into the ring and I remember thinking, this isn't training now. So if I go, stop, 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 I can't. Mm -hmm. It's going to carry on regardless. And that was a, a quite a, uh, a shocking three seconds as I first went in. If a young person's listening to this and they're thinking, right, I'm going to take the first step. I'm, I'm going to go for my career. I've been given an opportunity to go for an interview and I've never done it before and mm -hmm. I'm so scared. Mm -hmm. My parents have told me, like, given me some advice. We've done some practice, but I'm, I'm petrified. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to that person? Welcome to Find Your Force, the career potential podcast. Everyone has a talent they were born to do and we're here to help you find yours for your career. Whether you're taking the first step or the next step in your career, our advice and stories are here to help. Hi, I'm Hope, your host for season two of Find Your Force. And in this episode, I'm joined by Juliet. We're going to be speaking about stepping outside of your comfort zone and what it can do for your career. So welcome, Juliet. Thank you for joining me today. To start things off, can you give a brief summary of your role within the Royal Air Force? Absolutely. So I came here in January 21 as an instructor. Uh, I then moved across um, to the instruct the instructor uh, at the start of this year, uh, where I now make sure that the people coming into the academy are the right person for the right job. And so I attract, select and train them. You're basically welcoming people into the Royal Air Force, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And having to kind of promote it and get them to want to join. Yes, so, but this is the staff area. So I, I used to work downstairs as an instructor and then uh, sort of moved upwards <clears throat> to sort of train the trainer as such. So today on the episode, we're talking about stepping outside of comfort zones. We all know what makes us feel comfortable um, and sometimes we can shy away from taking the step to, to jump out of that zone. How often do you think you remain in your comfort zone? I try and get out of my comfort zone uh, as much as possible, if I'm honest, because I think being outside your comfort zone puts you into stretch. And it's when we're in stretch, that's when we learn most about ourselves, and that's where we can grow and improve. So I try and do it as much as I can. My job and life doesn't always lend itself to being in stretch, so I, I find ways of purposely doing it through other activities, I suppose. And we'll come on to speak about those other activities, but I want to know if... You've always been that way. Have you always stepped out of your comfort zone? No, not really. So back in 2005, I got quite poorly um, and it was quite a serious illness. And then when I got back from that illness, I wanted to test myself both physically and mentally if I how, sort of how fit I was. Um, and so that's probably what was the catalyst of, of the... It was a massive mind change for myself. What did you learn about yourself during that time? Of illness? Mm. Um, I learned that I was stronger than I thought I was. And I actually, I learned that I needed to uh, be mentally strong to be able to bounce back. And so when I was back to full fitness after the illness, I, I wanted to see what my, I wanted to push my body back and see what I could, what I could physically do. Um, and I carried on with my career for a, a short while, and then I, I remastered to PTI because that was probably at the time the most arduous thing and the, the biggest test that I could put my body through. Can you explain what this PTI is? Yeah, it's a physical training instructor, um, and it's the, the role within the Royal Air Force where personnel um, will in, sort of educate and train other personnel to be as, as robustly fit as possible. You spoke about this catalyst in your life and that changed your mindset and made you want to push yourself do you think everyone needs a catalyst in order to step out of their comfort zone no I don't think so I suppose prior to my illness uh, I was also uh, doing things to push myself out of the comfort zone I was I've always been into sports so prior to PTI training I was doing uh, wakeboarding and snowboarding to the level where I was representing the Royal Air Force at both wow. sports. So that was definitely taking out myself outside the comfort zone. Uh, it's quite scary when you're stood at the top of a, a slope in, say, Austria or wherever it might be, and you hear the beeps counting you down for your race, and, and you look across and see your opposition, and it's a, maybe a one-on-one -on -one race. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's quite scary sometimes. It's quite, uh, quite daunting. So there were definitely occasions I was doing that, but I think it was my illness that really made me push myself to my absolute limits. How does it feel physically 
when you're out of your comfort zone? Well, it's a bit of a lead-in. So when I'm about to do something, it's really daunting and I get maybe overthink things and I, I might, uh, my heart might race or I might feel, you know, a bit of trepidation. Can, can I achieve this? You know, have I trained enough or am I ready? Or, and you ask the, yourself those sort of questions. In the moment, it's just, yeah, it's amazing because you're, you're giving it your all and you're doing your absolute best to, to try and achieve whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And then afterwards, uh, it depends on how I've got on, but generally, whether it's good or bad, I feel good because I've learned something about myself. And it's either I've grown to know what to do next time or I feel um, pride because I've achieved it. So, yeah, it's diff- different feelings. We touched on activities that you do mm-hmm. to try and stretch yourself because in your daily life you feel like your, your role doesn't always give you that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some of those activities. Okay, well, um, so when I was 38 years old, um, I had come to some sort of uh, a little bit of a dip in my, in my fitness. I've always um, done a lot of fitness and I've always done a lot of running and, and bits and bobs, but I, at that time I didn't really have much of a goal to work towards. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend came up to me and he said, oh, I'm, I'm organising a, um, a boxing show for the station. Would you like to help me organise it? And I was like, mm, no, but I'll be in it. And he was like, you're not a boxer. And I was like, well, I can be. Um, and I thought, why not? So instead of organising the show, I put my name down to be part of it. Um, the next day, the, one of the boxing coaches came to see me and he said, yep, join the club. We'll, we'll get you to standard. And that was it. So I, I started training pretty hard, um, and then I had my first show, and then which I won. So I was happy with that. Did your friend get someone else to help him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you let him down there? <laughs> I know, I know. But yeah, he found someone. <laughs> and was that the only time you boxed, or did you go and do it more? I did it twice more after that, um, and unfortunately those weren't successes. But again, I learned so much about myself, uh, and my final bout was against, uh, I think it was a 22-year-old, uh, army PTI so and, and it was a split decision so I was, I was pretty happy with that um, but yeah it was just to get to have those experiences and have those moments and to push myself and, and that is probably the, one of the most physical things I've done to push myself to um, but yeah really really re- rewarding and I would say if anybody gets the chance just to have one bout because it's, it is really really good. The training is so intense yeah. and it's all about not only your physical kind of conditioning and your strength but also obviously your boxing ability there's also the mindset as well you've mm-hmm. got to be so driven and you've got to go in there being aware that you may get hurt and get mm-hmm. punched in the face no one wants to get punched in the face no <laughs> how did it feel to, if you got punched in the face how did it feel so it was strange the very first time my very first bout I, I went into the ring and I remember thinking this isn't training now so if I go stop 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 I can't. Mm-hmm. It's going to carry on regardless. And that was a, a quite a, uh, a shocking three seconds as I first went in. So, yeah, it, 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 reality hits. But for the training itself, uh, for that first bout, I remember waking up at like five o'clock in the morning and it was dark outside. I was tired and I needed to go training. And all I would think in my mind is, I bet my opposition is already out there training. And that's all I needed. So then I'd throw back the covers and I'd say, well, I'll, I'll show her. I'll, I'll be out training first instead, yeah. So then I'd get out and do it. But I think, I think a lot of it comes from having, having a healthy internal competitive mind. So I, I think I, quite, I like to compete against myself uh, to see if I can do something or not. If someone isn't naturally like that, can they nurture that side of themselves, do you think? Yeah, I think it's definitely something people can work on um, without a shadow of a doubt. And I think it's just surrounding yourself by people who may be more that way minded um, to kind of bring that out of you. So you've spoken about boxing. Mm -hmm. You tried that. Yep. Weren't for you in the end. Mm -hmm. What other activities have you tried? So I have recently got into hill walking um, through a group that I met uh, actually on Facebook. So there's a couple of groups that I'm part of uh, and I meet up with people and we like to sort of sometimes go for a nice bimble and take lots of pictures, but other times really push ourselves and see how we get on. Um, I've recently uh, done the Yorkshire Three Peaks um, and so we did that uh, as quickly as as we could, um, as well as other activities such as Helvellyn and and other bits and bobs. Um, But what what meant from that is I met a lot of people who like to do while swimming 
And so from that activity, I started doing wild swimming. Now, even though I am a wakeboarder and I've been in water a lot, um, I'm actually not very good, or I, I wasn't ever very good with cold water. Um, and it was always like I wasn't a very cold weather wakeboarder whatsoever. Um, so doing the wild swimming meant that I kind of really put myself out of the comfort zone and kind of found myself in a situation that wasn't entirely comfortable and just it was a challenge uh, and so I did that and it's just become now part of my life and every Wednesday I meet up the, with the group and we go swimming no matter what the weather. They say that with food you can teach yourself to like something if you eat it often enough. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's the same sort of thing with these activities that you try like cold water no sorry mm-hmm. but now it's part of your life yeah absolutely but you need to do it in a manner that is gradual because I think if you do too much too soon you can absolutely turn your mind and body off something so when it came to the wild swimming what I would do at first is I would have a shower and at the end of that shower I'd have 20 minutes of uh, sorry 20 seconds of it cold 20 water. minutes my goodness <laughs> not 20 minutes. definitely not 20 <laughs> minutes but yeah 20 seconds of it at the end would be cold and then it'd be a little bit longer 30 seconds and and then a minute or whatever and I think now I could quite happily have just a freezing cold shower and not have any warmth at all and so I gradually built it up that way and then when I took it to the water and went swimming it, I'd be in for a couple of minutes and then maybe five minutes uh, and then last week it was I think eight degrees and I was swimming for 20 minutes um, so it's definitely a gradual build-up so I would say don't do too much too soon because I think then you could probably push it too far and think oh that was horrendous I'm never doing that again it's like if you set yourself unobtainable goals um I'm not gonna have chocolate for yeah. two years be realistic otherwise you're gonna set yourself up to fail yeah. what health benefits do you get from doing the the freshwater swimming uh the health benefits a lot of it's mental so there is something really cathartic about getting into the freezing cold water for the first I don't know, 20 seconds where you're regulating your breathing, you're clearing your mind, you're, you're just getting in there mentally, it's really, really good. Um, so I think that's a huge benefit. And the hill walking, mm-hmm. I imagine sometimes you can get horrible blisters mm-hmm. and your legs are aching. When it comes to overcoming things and being outside of your comfort zone, would you say the mental side is more important or the physical side? So I think you need to prepare your body physically in order to be able to focus on the mental side because otherwise you'd be distracted by the fact that you weren't physically able to do something and you wouldn't get the full benefit from whatever you're doing out of it mentally. We're jumping around a little bit, but going back to the swimming, is there any inspirational people that you look up to in that world? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. The, the people I swim with, um, a lot of them are inspirational. Um, there's a lady there called Vicky who's, who's been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, and she's kind of uh, looked after me, taken me under her wing. And she, she does various activities. I think she's currently training now to do a relay uh, in the channel. So she's really, you know, proactive and into it. And she's got lots of good advice um, that helps me along the way. And then you just bump into people. Uh, I went up to Krakow not so long ago, and I went over uh, that way, and I did a walk, and at the end of the walk, there was a, a bog. So I, I went swimming in there. I kind of talked my boss into going as well. As you do. As you do. Um, and so we both went in, and then we actually met a lady uh, who was in the car. I think she was either just swimming or had just swim, swum, uh, and, her, and her nickname is the Mirtha Mermaid. Um, I got chatting to her a little bit, and she's actually uh, got a documentary uh, which is on BBC iPlayer called The Mirtha Mermaid, and it's all about how she has trained herself to swim a mile and a half in the Arctic Circle. So, and, and it's an incredible feat, and it's well worth watching. Um, and so we got chatting, um, and sort of, you know, she explained, you know, how she trains and stuff there. And then I watched the documentary, uh, and it turned out, and I didn't know at the time that she's ex RAF um, uh, RAF police. So. Yeah, it was good. Good to meet her. Did you know that if you join the Royal Air Force, you'll be getting much more than just the job? You'll have opportunities that no other employer can hope to match. From worldwide travels to lifelong friendships, a life in the RAF is a unique experience. If that sounds good to you, find out more by heading to the episode description. Are there any activities that you haven't yet tried that you want to? Uh, wing walking springs immediately to mind. I'd love to do that. Um, but 
more of a long-term activities. I don't know until it, they come into my head, if I'm honest. And I think I'll see something or someone will do something and then I think, yeah, I'd like a piece of that. So I, I don't always know until, until it's made apparent to me, I don't think. Is there anything that you wouldn't want to do? Nope. I'd give everything a go, if I'm honest. Why is that? Just to see what is I, or just to see what I'm capable of, I think. Just to see what I can or can't do. We speak a lot about discovering things that you don't like is just as valuable as finding things that you, you do like. Mm-hmm. Trying these different things, what have you learned about yourself? I think, I think there's more to me. That, that, that I can do more than I realise. When I did my physical training instructor course, one of their sort of uh, the ways of building you up as a person is to take you to your mental brick wall and teaching you how to smash through it. And that's one of the biggest lessons I learned from that training. Um, so things like we would go out for a, I don't know, 9, 10, 12 mile run, whatever it might be. Um, and in that run, they would make you do sprint sessions. So by the time you get back, you're absolutely exhausted. But they would take you back to like the main gate and, then, and you'd be start slowing down and you're mentally winding down and you're mentally coming to the end of your run and it's almost over. And so you're like, ah, and you're relaxing. And then they get to the front gate, they stop you, you're switching off, and then they say, right, we're going to do another lap of the camp, and that's another three or four miles, whatever it might be. So you have to dig in and really smash through that mental barrier that you've already switched off, that you're done and dusted, and really dig deep to then complete that three or four mile run at the end. And that's what the PTI training was really, really good for. And I think that is what I took away from that the most, that even when you think your tank is completely empty and there's nothing left, actually, if you dig deep enough, there's something there that you can use. Can you share some techniques of how to dig deep? I would say just say yes to everything. So whenever I'm asked to do something, I will say yes. If anyone asks for volunteers, I'll put my hand up. Whatever it might be, big, small, important, unimportant, scary, not scary, whatever it might be, I will always volunteer and say yes to. Because you never know what that experience will bring out of you. And you'll never know what you'll learn from it. You'll never know how that can make you grow, what you find um, scary or not scary, or what you might be good at or not good at, or anything. It just really, really opens up so much. And so all you can do is just try And it could be something tiny. It can be something quite minuscule. So maybe it could be giving a brief to the station, um, for a station brief, or it could be something like writing a piece of policy if your, you know, your staff work isn't particularly good. Or it could be absolutely anything. It could be escorting a VIP around a station. It could be hosting. It could be a position on a committee, such as secretary, or absolutely anything. And if you've got that little doubt in your mind, oh, I'm not sure if I could do that, just say yes. Just say yes, and, and, you know, in my head, I always say to myself, well, what's the worst that could happen? And actually, not much, so you might as well give it a go. You touched there on big and small and important, not important. Mm-hmm. When it comes to stepping outside of comfort zones, a lot of the time people think that needs to be something huge, like swimming in freezing cold water, mm-hmm. like jumping out of a plane. Mm-hmm. But actually, it can link to things that are quite small, and mm-hmm. some people might take for granted can you give us some examples of smaller things that allow you to step out your comfort zone? Yeah, so probably if I was to say work-wise, what I'm not particularly confident in is maybe uh, organisational aspects. So when I first started uh, my first role after I commissioned as a personnel support officer, I was given the role of OCGD, and part of my role there was to um, help organise and do a lot of the general duties on station. And when I started that job, it was part of the 100th anniversary for RAF Wittering. So I had to help organise this huge dining-in night um, that would kind of sort of culminate the end of the year. Every, everybody was going to be there. Um, it was a huge event. And I'm not particularly confident in doing uh, anything of that size, I suppose. Um, and I got stuck in. And what I did was I made sure I just surrounded my, myself with people who could help. And that's really what it comes down to. So... If you ever think you're, you haven't quite maybe got the confidence or the skill set or whatever, whatever, whatever it might be, just surround yourself by people who can sort of help you through it 
And then one day the tables will turn and you'll be that person somebody else will turn to to help them lead them through it and it'll go full circle. What's the difference between stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing things you don't like? That's a good question. That's a good question. I think I think sometimes you don't know what you don't like until you've done it. Um, and I think to experience that or to understand that, you have to go outside your comfort zone. So if you have a, if you have a certain activity that you know might be sort of adrenaline raising or getting your blog going and get, being really exciting, um, but it's kind of something that's still quite scary. So if you take skydiving, for example, and you do it so many times, I think you stop going outside your comfort zone. I think it becomes something that you're quite prepared for and you know about. But if it's something that you actively don't like doing, then I don't think... and. I don't think you'd you'd carry on doing it, but you wouldn't know until you've done it. And to do that, you have to be outside your comfort zone. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It's like doing housework for the first time. You have to step out of your comfort zone to see if you like hoovering. You'll find you don't, never do it again. (laughs) If a young person's listening to this and they're thinking, right, I'm going to take the first step. I'm going to go for my career. I've been given an opportunity to go for an interview and I've never done it before. And Mm -hmm. I'm so scared. Mm -hmm. My parents have told me, like giving me some advice, we've done some practice, but I'm, I'm petrified. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to that person? So the way I approach anything is arm yourself with as much information as possible. That's kind of what I have done in life. And, and it also comes down to a little bit about who you know. So if you know somebody that uh, can sort of quiz you on your um, practice interview maybe something like that then get them to do it and kind of invite them around say look I'd like you to go through an interview with me and you could ask them to do it three or four times Um, and so a lot of it with fear is fear of the unknown so if you arm yourself with enough information and you give yourself um, everything that you can in order to sort of get to a situation and try something for the first time if you have all that information it might it won't feel like the first time when I went for my interview to be a commissioned officer, mm-hmm. I went round the bazaars and I found people whose job it used to be was to interview people to be a commissioned officer. And I said, just interview me, pretend it's real, you know, just go for it. Uh, and I think I did about five practice interviews, something like that. So by the time the real one came round, even though I had officially never done this interview before, I had, and so it felt like I was on common ground. I felt comfortable. I felt like I knew what I was doing. I felt like I was in control. And so the interview actually went really well. So I would say to anybody sort of approaching anything that they, they don't like or they might find scary or anything like that, is just arm yourself with as much information so when it becomes commonplace and it becomes familiar. So in some ways, I'm taking from what you said there, that the practice was actually you stepping out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So by the time that you got to the interview... You mentioned the word comfortable. You weren't in your com- you were not out of your comfort zone yeah. then. You were comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you're right. So the out of the comfort zone was knocking on someone's door or picking up the phone and saying, "Would you mind inter- interviewing me as a practice?" because even that might take, you know, a little bit of confidence to be able to do that. What I also do is I try and surround myself by people who are maybe in a position where they can help me through whatever it is I'm going through. So like the World Swimming Club, for example, I've surrounded myself with people who are comfortable doing that and have been doing it for a while. And so I kind of get swept along with it. And so I find that I'm actually, I really like situations where it's almost like, uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a group of you going through the same thing and you can really buoy each other up and help each other through. And it's the camaraderie that I really, really enjoy when it comes to being outside your comfort zone because if you're doing it with someone else you kind of help each other along how important is goal setting when it comes to stepping out of your comfort zone uh, i would say it's really really important but i think the secret is is to not give yourself too big a goal that is unattainable so i mean i have two children they're nine and eleven and when i talk to them about their achievements and what they can do in life and i always say set yourself small goals so me and my 11-year-old, we went out for a run, I think it was like half six the other morning, um, and towards the end of the, we only did about three miles, I think, and towards the end of that run, she was like, oh, I'm tired, I want to stop, and I'm like, okay, well, let's just run to that corner, can you see that corner? She's like, yeah, okay, so let's run to that, and then we ran to that corner, and I said, okay, you see the post box? Yeah, okay, well, let's run to the post box, and so by giving yourself small markers and small goals, 
things become far easier and more achievable mentally. Uh, and so, yeah, o- overall, I think it really helps. Talking about being a parent then, sometimes parents may have their own insecurities, their own fears, and they exert that onto their children. And then when their children want to step out and into the world parents struggle because Mm -hmm. it's not out of their child's comfort zone it's out of theirs Mm -hmm. what would you say to those parents I think it goes back to my my internal saying what's the worst that can happen you know and so I don't know silly story my girls wanted to see what would happen if we made popcorn without the lid on the saucepan so I said well let's have a go and we did and we made popcorn and it went everywhere and what was the worst that could happen nothing you know so little things like that and have a go with your kids you know and just show them that it's okay to have a go and it's okay to not pass everything first time or it's okay to find things difficult and and I try and remain upbeat and as positive as I can with the children because they definitely take it on and yeah that's what they'll carry on forward in their own lives. And what about children who have parents who who struggle to accept them wanting to do things? Join yourself put yourself in a club where you know you can meet sort of more like-minded people who would support you more Um, I think clubs are fantastic I can't get enough of just being part of a a team a club something like that that will help you through because you'll see so many different mindsets and the more positive mindsets you surround yourself with the more positive you'll be when we spoke about what you would say to a parent you kind of said oh what's the worst that can happen Mm -hmm. sometimes you have to try things twice so it kind of is answering that fear of failure that people have Mm mm-hmm and they don't always try things because they're scared they'll fail at it. They'll not be very good. How do you overcome that? Uh, it's a bit of a um, vicious circle, I think, possibly, because you overcome that by trying things again and again. And so there does have to be that first step where you get yourself into the right mindset. And it might it might be it might be something that would help that like maybe doing some meditation or maybe doing some online um, like yoga so you can just stay in your house you can do something like that and just find some some inner inner strength and maybe through meditation or something that's just going to allow you to take those first tiny steps towards whatever it is you want to achieve and it's probably not going to be a quick fix you know so it might be something that's that takes time um, and small steps From a a wider conversation about the world of work, how has stepping outside of your comfort zone helped you with work? It's taken me to some amazing places and it's taken me to experience things I never, ever, ever thought I ever would experience. So when I think they asked for volunteers to do do a reading um, for Battle of Britain, um, at Westminster Abbey and I, I put my hand up and I said I'd absolutely do it um, after the reading I was then kind of whisked away and treated as a VIP Ooh. and I remember standing on a balcony with the royal family looking down at the Queen's Colour Squadron doing a parade and I was like how have I got here this is amazing so by saying yes and by by putting yourself out there and just maybe into situations you don't even know what's coming but it's yeah it could be out your comfort zone or or, or whatever just has led me to some some crazy amazing brilliant places through work we've touched on gradual changes gradual goals so you're not kind of overburdening yourself for expectations Mm -hmm. if someone struggles to step outside their comfort zone what small things would you suggest they put in place to help them um, I think small realistic goals, but maybe communication, so talk to people, um, because if you keep it all within yourself, and it's only you that knows these goals, then it's very, very easy to go, mm, I'll do it tomorrow, mm. I'll do it tomorrow. Whereas if you give yourself a bit of ownership and you communicate what you're trying to achieve with people, you know, they can ask, oh, how are you getting on with that? And it might be, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow, now, come on, let's let's do it now, or whatever. And I think that's really important, just to keep that sort of lines of communication open so you can get some positivity from people that's a bit like me if I go running I like going on the main roads because I Mm -hmm. won't stop if there's loads of cars Mm -hmm. don't want to be embarrassed (laughs) so earlier on we spoke about um, surrounding yourself with people who help you feel encouraged and kind of lift you up if you need a bit of support Mm -hmm. what would you advise someone to do if they're in a team or they've got a friend who's nervous about something that they're doing together 
Uh, again, communication, talk to people. Um, and I think it's, it's quite uh, a good idea and important to make things fun. I am all about fun, and I think that really, really helps sort of put people at ease. Mm -hmm. It really takes the minds off whatever it is they're doing, and you have a laugh, and you just kind of, you make it something that you want to do as opposed to something that you're being forced to do. And so, yeah, just try and keep it as upbeat as fun and as fun as possible, and that's probably a really good tip. Juliet, are there any negatives of stepping out your comfort zone? I don't believe there are, no. I don't think so. Um, because, again, what's what's the worst that can happen if you're uncomfortable? Uh, and if you feel like you can't do something or you're not very good at something, um, you've still probably learnt something about yourself to take to a different skill that you then might be really good at. And if you are uncomfortable, talking about maybe the, the freshwater swimming, mm -hmm. when you first plunge yourself in there, because it's quite a nice metaphor, actually, what can you do to to calm yourself down, to remind yourself that you're okay, it's all right, you're trying something new? Well, I think the more you put yourself in uncomfortable positions, the more you, you realise nothing lasts forever. And it, and it doesn't. You know, I've been on really long runs where I'm hurting and I'm tired and I'll think, well, tomorrow I'll be in bed, asleep. <laughs> so, you know, just keep going because it all comes, everything comes to an end. Nothing lasts forever. And if you keep that in the back of your mind, I think that's, that keeps you strong in the moment. You're a very inspirational person. We've learnt that throughout this episode today. But there's also an inspirational show you wanted to tell us about. Yes, there is. So this is a programme on Netflix called The Human Playground. And it's all about how humans like to push themselves to the absolute limits uh, through play. And it's, it's fascinating to watch. And there's a, there's a ton of different activities all around the globe where people do various things such as running marathons in, in the Sahara to uh, ice water swimming to... Uh, bullfighting to um, there's different races involving bicycles or whatever it might be um, and it's all about how and why they do it so the why is really important what makes somebody kind of push themselves to that limit uh, and, and how do they do it and it's a yeah it's a fascinating insight to how our human psyche works do you think we all have that within us i think so i think more people some people have it more than others um, but yes i think it's an innate sort of innately built into our character somewhere. And when you see these people doing these crazy, and I'll mm -hmm. put that in inverted commas, mm -hmm. for some people that it's not crazy, activities, do you feel like you're aligned with them? Some of them. Some of them I wouldn't do. Some of those activities are even maybe a bit much because I do have children at home, and so I wouldn't want to kind of be halfway around the world doing something super insane. Uh, so yeah, my, maybe my moment has, has, has left <laughs> for that but some of the sports in there are really, really cool though It comes down to your values and your priorities, doesn't it, as well? Yeah all has, a, all has a place Well, Juliet, thank you so much for sharing all of your stories You're a very interesting lady <laughs> Is there any last words that you want to say to our listeners today about stepping outside of their comfort zone? All I like to say is and I've said it throughout this interview is what's the worst that could happen and nothing lasts forever um, you know, and I used to tell myself that when I was on my way to school and hadn't done my homework, I think, well, in 20 years, no one's going to care, <laughs> you know, and so that's all I would say is just give everything a go because ultimately the, the only person that's really overthinking it is yourself. Um, so just, yeah, give it a go. Well, Juliet, thank you so much for sharing all of those wonderful insights and those shows that you mentioned will pop in the description so people can check them out. Thanks for listening to Find Your Force. If you liked what you heard, then subscribe for future episodes. And don't forget to share. It really does make a difference. We want as many people to realise their career potential by finding their force. <laughs>